Hey guys, and welcome back to Okami. Through the power of a drunken sheep, we now have the power to slow down time, which is uh, going to be very beneficial for getting past these, like, what, border patrol spiders, and also <laughs> getting in just loads of sneaky hits on enemies before they even have a chance to react. If you want a nice, relatively easy time in those really challenging fights that I told you about, which we will be doing at the end of the walkthrough. Ah, oh, yes. Veil of Mist is a godsend. It allows you to just get in on all of those enemies. And also just in general, it's easily one of the most helpful brush techniques out there. Because, just because it does slow down the enemy and it just gives you that time to get in those extra hits. Man, I really want a new Prince of Persia game with all this slowdown malarkey going on right now. I think, like, the only two I've never played are 2008 and Forgotten Sands. I hear Forgotten Sands was okay. I'm not going to comment on uh, 08. Now, you see, obviously, I really do actually quite like Prince of Persia 2008. It has its flaws, don't get me wrong. I wasn't going to say anything. It's fine. But I do really love that game just because I love the characters, I love the world and the idea behind it. Obviously in the vein of Prince of Persia it's perhaps not Prince of Persia -y enough. Yeah. Some people in the combat's a bit weird, but and the platforming is a little bit too automated. But it's a game that I can sort of settle into and enjoy and I'm totally fine with that. Hang on, I think I did actually play a bit of it on stream once, I think I might have rented it or something, and I think the sticking point for me was, whenever you like fall into a hole or whatever, your partner like picks you up so you can't technically die, yes. but there was one bit where she gets incapacitated uh, by like a demon or some other dark yes, creature, and I jumped off just to check, just to check that the game wasn't being jammy, and oh, what do you know, she still saves you. Well... Yes, but the whole point... Well, I don't know if you got far enough for it to be that one. It might have been something else. Um, but there is one fight um, where the whole point is you don't know which is the right Alica. Hmm. So you have to jump off to be able to find the right one, because obviously she will save you. It's a really clever use of that gameplay mechanic. Interesting. Okay, back to Okami, which we're supposed to be covering. What can we expect in this part, mate? Any antics to speak of? Well, major antics, because we're going to finish off the dungeon today. And also, you may have seen the, the hideous green stank mist that is uh, causing chaos in Seon City. Um, is coming right from the Emperor's Gob. So, uh, he's, he's the root of everything that's going on here. Jeez. So we probably should try and sort that out. I'm, I'm here, Oprah. I have brought the Tic Tacs at long last. <laughs> but yes, we're going to be doing something that you maybe weren't quite expecting to see in Okami. Okay, that could mean a number of things, mate, because, you know, we've already been shrunken down to the size of an ant and, you know, got power from a drunken sheep, so what else could surpass that? Well, you'll just have to see. Um, but first, we need to... Well, I'm going to go take this guy down just because I want extra demon fangs, extra yen, and also, to be fair, you've got all of these mirrors in here, so... Might as well make sure that I've got them all in my bestiary. Yeah, and you know, you've got to free the people inside the mirrors as well, which I assume is what happens when you destroy them. Uh, to be fair, I honestly do not know. Um, but either way, just need to murder them anyway, because obviously they're, they're demons, so they need to die. Gotta get the yen, gotta get the dough. Exactly, and also it gives me extra yen, and loads of demon fangs, and right now I really, 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 really want demon fangs. Oh, what are you looking to uh, purchase, mate? Well, basically, uh, the next demon fang merchant um, is coming up really soon. That means that we are going to be able to get some holy artifacts that are going to be an absolute godsend. Mm. 
So it's really very important that you make sure you are stocking up on your demon fangs right now. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I'll make a note of that for if I ever play the game. Yes, you should. But yeah, basically, this is what I've been stockpiling for because it's coming. But basically, I believe the next part uh, we're probably going to do a massive splash. Demon Fang shopping. Suits you, sir. Well, I mean, considering, you know, we'll have finished the dungeon, it's only right that we then spend our time doing loads of side quests. Yeah, yeah, it's the way things should go in, like, RPG or action-adventure games, I feel. Exactly. And, um, I have to say, we are going to be doing a lot of side quests. Well, um, <laughs> as long as you take the lead, it don't matter to me, mate. Well, it, it'll all be fine, um, but this is... Well, what's going to come up is easily the <laughs> m largest amount of side quests that you're going to get in the game ever. Oh. Like, there's so many turn up at once, it's insane. Sorry, I was just a bit tickled by the fucking assault course spider, like, going back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> it is kind of ridiculous, but it's so fun. And I don't know why we're getting the Imperial Palace map here, because there is literally no point to it. Because we are right at the end of the dungeon. Really? Yeah. Well, okay, I didn't make the game, you know, I just talk over it, so whatever. Yeah, th this raft challenge is the last thing that we are going to have to do, and it's really not that complicated. Given all the spiders and whatnot bopping about, I'm expecting a spider-themed boss. Would I be correct in that assumption? You would be completely incorrect. Oh, interesting. Keeping me on my toes, though, can't me. I likes it. Well, I mean, to be fair, we've already had a spider-related boss in Spider Queen. The game's not above recall, as Reggie. You should know this. This is true. But then, uh, the game is also not going to be that cheap. In terms of we're dealing with a main dungeon, yeah. and therefore it's not going to reuse a boss for that. It's going to potentially reuse bosses for other things, but not that. That's fine. I think boss rush is okay. Like, as the boss of a dungeon, a recaller doesn't really fit, honestly. Indeed. I think you'll actually be quite pleased with the boss that we're going to be taking down, because he is actually really cool as an idea. Whoa, okay, you need to calm down, Mr. Platform Spider. Yeah, these guys are slightly terrifying, because obviously they're slow until you jump on them and then they just go at a ridiculous speed and you're just like, oh my god, slow down, slow down, for God's sake. <laughs> Can you combine the slow down brush god power with another brush god power? Um, yes. Ah, okay, so like the phoenix power, for example. Yeah, so you could use fire burst and, um, or whatever it's called, I don't know, I'm just making up fire words. Yes, yeah, so you, you can do. To be fair, making use of multiple brush techniques at once is always quite helpful, um, but yes. Big swirling stank vortex coming straight from the Emperor. Jesus, man. I thought he was evil, but he just seems sick. Yeah, he's he's very, very grievously sick. And so we're going to do the only thing that is right. We are going to go inside him. Ew. I wasn't actually expecting something of this caliber, like fucking Jabu Jabu's belly. <laughs> yes, we have gone inside the Emperor's Gob, um, although I don't quite know how this is working because, um, oh no, it would be fine because he's sleeping, so the uvula would be on the bottom, but it is still strange, and I don't think this is exactly how um, the digestive tract works. Um, Surely there must be some ancient Japanese folklore tale about guys who have strange digestive tracts. I mean, probably, but um, you, you would not be expecting a save mirror 
inside your throat, would you? That that would be slightly terrifying. Oh, I've swallowed multiple of those, just in case anyone wants to use me inside as a dungeon. <laughs> well, I like to think ahead. It is true, it is true. Um, but yes, we are going straight into a boss fight. Oh, it's tense. I can't wait to see what the boss is, Richie. It better be fucking good. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, it better not be fucking wacker. Oh, it's definitely not freaking wacker. Okay, I was panicking for a second there. Come on, show yourself. I ain't got all day. Oh, interesting. Oh my god, is it a possessed sword? Oh my god! <laughs> so, this is Blight. And, uh, yes, he is slightly terrifying. But what's fascinating is that... So, Blight's the name of the spirit. Um, but... The real battle is with his sword, Gold Nail. Oh, wow. It's a really cool uh, idea. Because obviously the design is very samurai based. And if you look at its helmet, um, it's very similar to the helmet on Orochi's head. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Although uh, Blight's helmet has a fog emblem, um, which is well, doesn't have a kanji symbol for its element on it, so it's unique in that sense. And you also have, the, so the fact that Goldnail the sword is what controls Blight, Goldnail looks very similar to Yamato, which is the um, Okutana, so the sword um, of the character Virgil in Devil May Cry 3 Dante's Awakening, specifically the special edition of the game, oh, okay. since Virgil is a playable character in the special edition. Um, largely because both blades have a cir golden circular guard and possess magical properties. Neat. When I first saw this dude, it put me in mind of a Muzo game where one of the characters, I, I forget the name of the, like, either the game or the series, but he wears blue, a uh, very specific description, obviously, uh, and he like wields three katanas in each hand, and it looks stupid, but I bet it was pretty rad to play as. Oh, I'm, I'm sure, yeah, because those are always like... They're insane, but they're glorious, and that's what I love in quite a lot of video games, is when they're just like so insanely ridiculous, but that just means that they are so awesome. So, the way that you uh, take down uh, Light and Gold Nail is you need to wait until he attacks with a move that will allow you to strike Gold Nail out and send it flying, and then you go in for the kill. So annoyingly, you are sitting around waiting for quite a lot of this, although it is possible to use Veil of Mist to uh, slow him down and get in some hits during that, which is quite satisfying to do. Another thing about Blight which is really quite awesome is that he is based off of the folklore of um, Tamamo no Mei, which is basically... Um, so Tamamo no Mei is a legendary figure in Japanese mythology, and essentially what happened was that this person ended up poisoning the Emperor. Hmm. So it's very much in the same vein. The whole idea was to take over the throne because of the illness, but um, I will say there is much more with the story of Tamamo no Mei that will come into focus as we play through more of Okami. So you're telling me you can't read the rest because it's spoilers? Indeed. And like, very majorly spoilers. Like, we're talking end of Act 2 spoilers. God damn. I've got to say, I always like enemies who wield a lot of weapons at once. I don't know, it's just something aesthetically pleasing about it. I haven't said that word in at least a couple parts, so you know, had to get back on track. I have to say, I do agree. It's because they end up looking very powerful and terrifying, even though obviously it's completely ludicrous and 
if you're wielding loads of weapons, how on earth are you going to be carrying all of them because they're heavy? Like, metal is heavy. Yeah. <laughs> but it does just make people look like a complete and utter badass. And you may have noticed that I have uh, shifted from using 7 Strike because I didn't feel it was helping me out enough for this fight. Is it not powered up enough yet, or was it not, like, specific in terms of use for this fight, you know, getting enough power out of it? I think it's because it's so slow, and because you have such a small amount of time in which to inflict damage on gold now, it just did was not giving me any use whatsoever. No joy. So it's just like, right, I'm just going to switch to the rosaries because then uh, I can actually get in a, quite a few more hits, and it's just going to make this fight go quite a lot quicker. I can think of two other bosses in video games that involve haunted swords. Feel free to leave a comment with your own, guys. But for me, it's the boss of the Lava Slash Volcano world in Donkey Kong Country 2, uh, and the mini boss of the Arbiter's Grounds in Twilight Princess. Yes. That one's fucking rad, mate. Oh, definitely. I say, as though I remember this boss fight. I know I do, and I'm sure if I looked up a picture or a video of it I would remember but right now my brain's just going nope cannot remember a thing when you first get into the mini boss arena there's basically a sword and it's bound by like spell tags and whatnot and you cut one and then like the spirit of the sword or whatever comes out and starts attacking you ah uh, uh, yes no I remember it now Arbiter's Drowsers was just a fucking great dungeon in general honestly Oh my god, yes it was. It's just so much fun as well. Yeah, yeah, you get the spinner. I mean, granted, it's pr pretty much useless outside that dungeon, but whatever, it was fun while it lasted. Well, it's it's a ridiculous item, and it's just very satisfying to use. Oh, yeah, Blight died. Okay. Yes, and we get another set of rosaries! Ooh. Yay, I got it. Woof. <laughs> So yeah, these are the exorcism beads, and you may have noticed that they've got very much the whole yin-yang design. But yes, that is at the end of Blight. And uh, hopefully we have rescued Seyan City now, because we have defeated the source of that acrid mist. So I get, like, I get the spirit of Blight being inside him, but how did the sword get inside the Emperor to begin with? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> it's completely ludicrous. It doesn't make any sense. But to be fair, we're dealing with ancient Japanese legend and mythology, most of which doesn't really make any sense anyway. So I'm pretty sure I can uh, forego a random sword being stuck in someone's stomach. Hey, I don't care. It made for a sick boss fight, you know? Indeed. But as you can see, even though we've defeated Light's the evil spirit dust or whatever has left the area very similar to how uh, Orochi vanished and uh, hmm, it's very ominous. Yeah, it's uh, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that the things we slay are going to help reconstitute Orochi. Eh, you're not quite right. It will all make sense eventually. Yeah, we should, we should probably get out of here now before the Emperor wakes up. Well, you see, about that, um, we kind of want to, you know, free Kaguya. Hmm. And the Emperor kind of has the power to free Kaguya. So... Yeah, I, I feel since we're inside him, we can probably do something quite useful, actually. First of all, lewd. Second of all, you're very right. What are we going to manipulate, then? Honestly, I don't know, but we're just going to move him somehow by bouncing about in his stomach, as you do. Okay, I've seen that episode of Spongebob where Plankton takes control of Spongebob's <laughs> brain. I know how this works. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, makes no sense. This, this is not how people move. I will make the Emperor shit, and then he will get the divine message of, Oh, I must free the princess. 
Well, look, <laughs> sort, of, sort of what we're doing is we're moving him via his stomach. So this is going to look really ridiculous, and you're going to love it. Well, honestly, this is how I get any kind of locomotion in general. I'm hungry, best go downstairs. Oh, I'm hungry, best go to the shop in an alternate dimension where I still go outside. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, that makes sense. Not this, this is literally us moving his gut forward and using that to propel the rest of his body forward. Oh, we're a goddess, it's fine. This is true. We, we we are allowed to defy the laws of physics. I mean, granted, we do on a daily basis. Like, we shouldn't be able to control the elements at all. This is magic. Tis true, tis true. I do feel sorry for Kaguya in this moment because she thinks that Isun and Army are dead. Because obviously the Emperor's woken up. The Emperor's the one who locked her up here. So she's just like, oh god, they're dead, no, but no, we're, we're, Isun's just starting to mess with her because he's a complete and utter arsehole. He is a bit, he is a bit. Tell me though, was it Blight and Goldnail who influenced the Emperor into doing these shitty things? Indeed it was. Okay, so the Emperor's a good guy at heart. Essentially, yes. What, what do you have just woken up and just, like, let her free anyway? Well, you see, that, that depends, because also, he's still the Emperor, so he's still a bit of a weirdo, and uh, yeah. he may still want to marry Kaguya, despite the fact that he's already married to the Empress. Oh, okay, he wants a mistress. Potentially, because he, he's a bit of a... It, it's the thing with Emperors, they do tend to like having a little bit on the side <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you, you know many Emperors there, Richard? Of course! What are you talking about? I'm, I'm like, I'm like the posh one of Hellfire comms, therefore I clearly know all the royalty in the world. Yeah, he had tea with the Queen earlier, you know. Oh yeah! Raw! Hell yeah! Well, how? I, I don't know, is Raw a synonym for how? I don't know. Doesn't really matter, we still beat Blight and we still save Seon City, so it is all good! Oh, that was a sick boss fight. We'll see you guys next time for more Okami.